Oh, this is the big break. We started this, what, seven, eight weeks ago, asking you to register and apply online. We had about 100 companies did so. We whittled that down to 20. And then at the back end of last year, we got 20 companies in here. And they went through the paces online. We whittled that down to 12. We whittled that down to six of the semifinals. And it all came down to two. Boon Coffee, run by Arit Mohammed, and She Moves, run by Devayani Dayal. Some really, really strong companies didn't make it through to the final. Very strong companies with good revenues and good business models. But these two, our judges said, were the ones that deserved to be through. So listen, let's get the thoughts of our judging panel this evening on what we've heard over the past hour or so. Just going to briefly reintroduce our judges because we were delighted to have them with us tonight. First of all, Edward Roderick, co-chairman of Investors Middle East and North Africa. Previously, Edward was chief executive of FTSE-listed company Christian Salverson, a large European logistics firm headquartered in the UK. Now, as co-chairman of Investors MENA, he helps small and medium-sized companies secure funding. We also have with us tonight Eileen Wallace, managing partner of the Portsmouth Group. Now, Eileen was educated in the United States before moving to Dubai just over a decade ago. In 2000, she was a founding partner of Wallace Marketing Consultants, which has grown into a successful company with offices across the region. And in 2006, Eileen launched a second agency, the Portsmouth Group, repeating the success of Wallace by establishing Portsmouth as a successful regional communications firm. And finally, our third judge this evening, Yusuf Tukhan Tukhan, Chief Executive Officer, Flip Media. Yusuf raised here in the UAE and after college in the United States, returned to Dubai to join the emerging internet industry in the late 1990s. In 2008, he was appointed Chief Executive of Flip Media, the region's largest interactive advertising agency, employing more than 100 people in seven offices across the world. To all our judges, we are delighted to have you here. We've heard the pitches from Devayani Dayal and from Arit Mohammed. Let's think about what we've heard, some of the strengths and weaknesses. First of all, Yusuf Takan Takan, your helicopter view of the two contestants as individuals and as companies. I think what's really important ultimately is you know, these, these women are the faces of their companies and they have to be articulate. They have to be able to sell their vision, not only to, to consumers, but also to investors, to bankers, to customers, to suppliers and everybody else. And I think that was a really key factor in my decision in terms of how I scored these, these, these competitors. Well, we're going to come to the decisions a little bit later on. Just looking at the what, what you thought qualitatively ab- about the, the the strengths and weaknesses of the two contestants mm-hmm. very quickly Yusuf well in terms of um, Orit and her and her coffee vision I, I like it it's original it's different you know she's from Ethiopia so there is that authenticity there in terms of what she's doing um, similarly when you look at Deviani you know she's obviously very passionate about sportswear about activewear really sees an opportunity there and really wants to grow her business as well P- potential weaknesses or pitfalls? I think in terms of weaknesses and pitfalls, um, uh, you know, in, in the same order, if I look to Orit's business, um, she struggled sometimes maybe to articulate what it is that made it special and to have a very clear vision for her product and her brand. Um, similarly with Deviani, you know, it is a dot-com business. This is a very fickle part of the world when it comes to e-commerce, you know, and I, uh, you know, so so the the opportunity there, you know, is, is, to, be, is to be considered. Eileen Wallace. I liked both of them, and I thought that they both had passion, and I thought they both had vision for their brands. It seemed to me that Orit had a stronger actual sort of business strategy and seemed more established in terms of the history of her family and the company and seems to have a good you know supply chain and, and control of the actual product. But I agree with Yusuf, it didn't seem that she was able to really package it and articulate it in as compelling a way as Deviani was. Equally, I actually don't feel terribly compelled by Deviani's business um, what she's actually selling doesn't really actually interest me as a potential consumer but I liked her and she seemed to be organized and on the ball and have a vision of where the business was going Edward Roderick well let's start by saying two wonderful girls making it all the way through to the final so it's always going to be a tough choice if I look at the the relative uh, strengths and weaknesses for both of them I think both of them have picked very difficult and extremely competitive markets in order to go into I think if you look at the at the relativity of it in Daviani's case she's importing product from the United States the design will be originated there not necessarily suitable to the region and therefore it will be very difficult to to pick those products also uh, she has to protect herself against competition and therefore the quality of her contracts with her suppliers may well 
um, determine that. But on the strength side, she's got a very clear vision of what to do. She has a very structured approach to how the advertising is going to be utilized. She articulates all of what she does very well. And she herself comes from the background of retail and a retail family. So I think that there was a lot of strengths on that side. If you then look at, at Orit, Orit also has a family background in coffee, etc. She's focused on the ethical side of things and also on products being natural and where they come from. And they're all trends that people are really focused at. She clearly uh, has good ideas to get across, but it articulated it not quite as well as Deviani. Both are very much startup businesses. Both have got a long way to go to prove themselves, but I think they've both got the energy and passion to do that. Let's have a look at some of the SMSs we've had in. Uh, someone writes in, they both did a great job. Please give them half each, <laughs> half the prize. I'm sure a lot of people, myself included, would echo that. Loads and loads of support for the Boom Coffee is the best uh, for me. Uh, please award it to a small business, which is a real need for financial and logistical support. Boom Coffee sounds fantastic. Uh, I'm a new mum. I really like the idea of She Moves. So many messages of support. i tell you what we've also got is some messages of support from some of our contestants from earlier this week and last week. There is controversy. Not everyone agrees with the judge's decision on who got through to the final. Interesting comments, always glad to have them, but there's no doubt we got two very, very worthy finalists here. How about some of the comments that we had in from our listeners? We, we addressed those earlier. Not the, the kind of, you're great, you're wonderful, we, you should win stuff, which, which is good and we're glad to have, but some of the more challenging ones. This idea, Eileen, that one of the comments about uh, Boone Coffee was that uh, perhaps in a world of, of Starbucks and the financial muscle of these companies, there's, there's no room for a small niche player. I guess I'm slightly suspicious of that argument. And, and you as an entrepreneur, you've gone up against the big boys in your field, the the, the Hill and Knowlton's and the, you know, whoever it may be and, and the WPPs and carved out a, a boutique firm. In any industry, there will always be room, won't there, for a niche boutique who can do something a, a little bit differently and a little bit better. Actually, I completely agree with Arit that quality is what people want at the end of the day. If you're delivering and you have the quality, then you're absolutely going to find customers for, for whatever it is that you're selling. Um, and so even if she is competing with those major multinationals, that's why I was asking her about her story. What's the story behind the brand? Because that's how small gr brands grow into big brands. There's something about them that ex excites um, and compels sort of the consciousness of their potential market. And that's what helps them grow into big brands. You have to have that differentiating story. You have to have something memorable about your brand. And I think as much as I liked Arit, that's probably where she was struggling, where she could really use you know the most help use of Tukan again uh, if we look at Flip Media it's a very it's the, the biggest interactive advertising agency in the region and yet if you can but it, it founded here in Dubai this is it, its home if you compare it to the giants like OMD mm -hmm. it, it, it is very small and yet you are the biggest within your niche so mm -hmm. it can be done can't it how it, can it be done it can be done but I think you know the important thing is to figure out what you're good at and be it and you know like you said you know we obviously we, we you know we, we compete against far bigger and far better funded companies every day of the week in terms of securing business. And I think the challenge really is to be very articulate in terms of who we are, what we're good at, and why we think we're special and why we think we're different. And Which is part of the reason why I put some, such an emphasis on this with the contestants in terms of, you know, if you had to give your elevator pitch, if you had to tell people why I should buy your coffee instead of Starbucks or why I should buy your active wear instead of going to the mall to buy something, why would I want to be convinced of that? You know, people are very fickle nowadays and they have very short attention spans. So you have to be able to sell to them quickly. Listen, we need to get to a winner very, very quickly. Edward, uh, final word to you on this. You are off first judge all those weeks ago here's my question you represent or you, you work for or you, you are investors at least in North Africa now you help bring investors people with money into small and medium sized enterprises what kind of questions would investors want to ask before they put some money into these two companies well, the what, what do they need to do before they can get some cash if they wanted it well first of all when we when we take people along to our investment meetings and and they meet our investors there are three fundamental questions that we get our investors to answer about them at the end of it the first one is what did you think of the idea that, that was being put forward to you secondly what did you think about the quality of the management team who are going to deliver it and thirdly what did you think of the probability of the delivery of the investment strategy and the 
performance, the profitability that's going to go along with those things. And they are the questions that people will be asking about that. So sourcing, protection of contracts, uh, maintenance of quality, underlying management team to support what's going on, logistical support, the amount of cash investment required and how the team were going to manage that and how quickly they can bring it to profit are all the things that are fundamental that would be asked about it and some of the things that were answered I think tonight. Edward Roderick, thank you very much indeed. Thanks also to our other judges, Eileen Wallace and Yusuf Takan Takan. Stay where you are because in a couple of moments time we're going to get both Arit Mohammed and Deviani Dial back in the studio and we're going to find out which one of them is going to win quarter of a million dirhams of radio advertising and that fantastic facility and office down at Dubai Airport Free Zone.